My friend, how are you? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while, ne? Have you seen Susan? Oh, Susan's in a relationship. Oh, Susan has a man. Ooh. Mm, mm. And Susan looks so happy. She looks happy. You can see it on her face, on her thighs, on her arms. She's gained so much weight. <laughs> Susan has let herself go. In six months, Susan has just her face. <sighs> And her arms, she's got two arms, not one. Here, here, hi. <laughs> Susan's going to lose that man. And he's so beautiful. Ooh, that man, his arms. Ooh, I'm getting chills just thinking about that man. And he's growing a beard. Oh, you know how much I like beards, my friend. Ah, how you know me? <laughs> ah, but Susan's gonna lose that man. Susan has let herself go. It's not gonna end well. It's not. Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kopane Shimange and this is How I Do Things. The show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. And I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it. Use it, don't use it. Do what you will with it. Listen, I am no pro. I'm not a professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Honeys, you know this term of letting yourself go. I heard it so much when I was getting married. And I think it, it comes from a good place. But in, in a way, it just, I don't know if it sits well with me. Maybe it does. Maybe it does sit well with me. Maybe I'm just not happy with the way that it's said. I don't know. I don't know. Today we're going to unpack this letting yourself go situation of when you're in a relationship and you've been in this relationship for a while, people tell you that you shouldn't let go of yourself. After you have a child, after you get married, older women and younger women will tell you, don't let yourself go. You must always maintain yourself and maintain your man. This is a packed issue. So today we're going to be unpacking it, all the questions that we need to ask ourselves about maintaining ourselves and maintaining our marriage. And what does it actually mean to let ourselves go? Is it something we should listen to or nah? This is a question, many questions that I've received on Instagram about maintaining ourselves and our men and letting ourselves go. So let's unpack it today. So this is a cozy conversation and how it works is that you fetch yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. We sit, come closer, come closer, come, 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 come. And we have a cozy conversation about a matter that is hitting us in the hearts. Today I'm having Lipton's forest fruit. It smells very, very sweet and I let it steep for a long time. So it's a bit strong, but also sweet at the same time. I'm not sure if I like sweet teas, but it's fine. Let's just get into today's topic. Number one, what does it actually mean to let yourself go? What, wh when they say that she's letting herself go, what do they mean? When I think about it, the most times that I see society speaking about it and what they mean when they say that is like when a woman is in a relationship and she has become comfortable in the relationship, then she starts to gain weight. Then she doesn't look as good as she always used to. I don't know what standards that is in. It's either weight gain or her skin is not as great or she's not taking care of her hair the way that she used to. She always used to have her nails done and her nails are not done anymore. She's just looking a bit undone, you know, a bit frabbed, frazzled. That's what I think people mean by the term letting yourself go. And I remember I received this, this um, piece of advice from aunts and uncles and parents when I got married that don't let yourself go. And having discussed it with other men before, my husband and family members, it is an important thing and it's directed at women because it's believed that women are the ones to tend to let themselves go when they get into a relationship because they get their plate full and they stop focusing on themselves and looking as good as they used to. Only when they go out, then they start to dress up and feel all good. But I also feel like this term actually applies for men as well. Most of the times, if not all the times, it is directed at women. And as soon as a woman gains weight, she's letting herself go. As soon as she decides to go from relaxed hair to natural hair or from weaves down to, you know, her natural born hair, she's letting herself go. And I think it's a very shallow understanding of the term. And I think it's a very shallow approach to marriage and maintaining a marriage. Number two, is it a man problem or a woman problem? 
Personally, I think it's both. Because you get into a relationship with a person, this man used to care about how I look, and you know, he used to care about how he presents himself to me, and now we get married. This man doesn't go to gym anymore. He doesn't wear the same clothes he used to wear anymore. His style has changed. Everything has just become relaxed, too relaxed, as if he doesn't still have to work to keep me. Huh? However, this term is always pictured at women. Why? Why? Look, I personally think that it is important to continue to take pride in how you present yourself all the time. You must always be your top priority all the time. And just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean that now you fall lower in the priorities. No, it's always God, you and then. And what tends to happen when you get into these really serious relationships is that we tend to put other things and other people before us. And we don't take as much time to maintain ourselves, to look good for ourselves and all of those things. And the most important thing is, who are we looking good for? Are we looking good for the man or are we looking good for ourselves? Number three, let's try and understand it and redefine what it actually means to let yourself go. The way that I see it is completely different from the way that I saw it before. And now I really understand where the wisdom was coming from when they told me not to let myself go. Because as women, we're such giving people. Naturally, we're nurturers. So we want to nurture and take care of people. So we get into a house and we want to take care of the husband. We get into the house and we want to take care of the house itself. We want to take care of the food. We want to take care of the baby. And then we, we stop taking care of ourselves. Instead of it being a top three priority, being right up there, we start to let it go. And when what are we letting go of? ourselves a lot of the times when you ask it's like how do i maintain myself to main you know how do i maintain my man and when we say that it's usually how do i make sure that i always look good so i don't lose my man and that is the wrong perspective we need to redefine it and say how do i take care of myself so i don't let go of myself for me how do i make sure that i remain a top priority for myself you don't take care of yourself and look good for your man no we don't do makeup for him no we do it for ourselves in that I always want to look good. I always want to maintain myself. It is important, ladies, that we remain a high priority to ourselves. And this is not to say that there's a specific way that we should all look. We all have our individual styles. We all have our individual taste. So whatever your taste is, maintain your taste for yourself. It is important to do so. Always look good for yourself. Whatever your definition of looking good is, maintain it constantly for yourself so number four now that we understand what letting ourselves go means what are we going to do about it it means that we have to put ourselves and our self-care at a very high level and self-care is not just masks on a sunday self-care is so much more the essence of who you are starts to deteriorate because you're not giving yourself the attention you deserve and because of that, you start being angry and short with your man. You start arguing with him. And these all, it makes it look very superficial. But the truth is, it begins with time and priority. You're no longer a priority to yourself. And you're trying to feed people from an empty well. Remember, when you're putting into a relationship, you're feeding from a well. And if you don't maintain yourself in terms of self-care and taking time and putting time for yourself, that well runs dry. And what are you giving to your man now? Droog sand. Because there's no water in the well no more. Because you took no time to refill it. It may look superficial. It manifests itself first in a very superficial way. But it goes deeper into the relationship because of your temperament. Because of your behavior. Because of how you feel. Because of how you carry yourself. How are we going to make the time? Because the reason why we let ourselves go is because we don't have time, guys. We don't have time. I don't have time. I've got so many things to do. I've got to make the baby's food. I've got to, you know, take care of the house. I've got to clean. I've got to do my work. All of these things take higher priority than my self-care. And that's a problem. It is a very big problem. You're not alone in the house. If, if you're here and you're listening to letting yourself go, you're in a relationship and you're probably living with your man. You're not alone. If, you're, if your priority list is so full and you can't find the time with it, you need to sit with your man and be like, ah, man, ah, my man. Let's see where the problem is here because I'm a very high priority in my books and I always want to maintain myself. But the time is not here. It's not here. When I look at my timetable for the week, it's not here. So how can we work together? Because this is our space. We are eating. We are going out. We are doing all of these things. So how can we make that time available? Because 
I'm making this a priority. So I'd like you to help me in making this thing a priority. It's important. If you don't put your foot down and say, hey, Papa, you always want me to look good again. You always want me to be there. You always want me to make jokes for you. Be happy for you all the time. You don't want me to have a short temper. Then we need to make sure that I have the time for myself to feed into myself. Or else, I shame this relationship. Mm. It's not going to go well. The truth about this tea is that I'm not enjoying it. Ugh. I'm not. I think I let it steep for too long. Sorry, Lipton. No, 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 no. We'll try a different tea next week. And finally, number five. We need to evolve as a couple. Time changes, our priorities change, how we spend our time together and apart from each other changes. Our taste changes. Whereas before, when I met V, I had a weave. A long here weave, Malaysian weave. And then I cut it all off and I had hair this short. So who I was from an appearance point of view when I met him is different from who I am now from an appearance point of view. Um, always had my nails done, all of those things. And now I look at self-care from a completely deeper point of view and not just from a, you know, hair and nails perspective, but still, still, girls gotta still keep herself looking good, okay? But we evolve as couples and we should allow ourselves to evolve and to evolve together. So if I'm going to take the time to make sure I don't let myself go, then you, my man, need to take the time not to let yourself go as well. And we evolve. More things become more important to us. Whereas before I didn't need to go for Botox, now I do. Before I wasn't interested in going on spiritual retreats, but a spiritual retreat is important for me. So as we evolve in terms of what we think, how we feed ourselves and feed into ourselves, how we evolve in that definition, we need to be open with it and help each other move along with that. So if my man says, I want to go on a meditation retreat, I look at him and I say, okay, cool. Can we go together? Do you want to go alone? And letting him go alone if he wants to. And then helping each other to find the best version of that so that we have the best form of putting into ourselves the ultimate thing about the term letting yourself go mostly is about your priorities when you get into a relationship as a woman we tend to put ourselves lower and lower and lower as a priority and we need to make sure that we keep that high because once we stop feeding into ourselves that's when we let ourselves go now i hope that you guys enjoyed that one this is a topic that came from the powers that be the elders in our lives were just like honeys this is relationship advice. You need to take care of this one. Let me know in the comment section down below, how do you perceive the term letting yourself go? And has your definition of it changed in any way? I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, beautiful people. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Give it a big thumbs up. I'm Kapana Shimangi and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching that video right until the end. I'm just re-watching it right now and I'm so happy we actually had this conversation. So thank you for sending me that question. Now if you have not subscribed to my channel, click on my face right here and you'll be subscribed. Feel free to binge watch because that's what we do. We come here and we binge watch, especially if you missed anything this week. I'm watching you. If you have not gone to my website, head over to www.kopanishmagi.com and download my new free resources, especially my book, The 7 Hacks to Building Your Confidence. Until next time. Mwah. Bye.